All right, good morning. I guess being prepared is boring. Uh, I know I make these videos every day, and I don't do it for you. I do it for my own sanity, <laughs> you know? You know what I'm talking about. Um, sometimes you need to express yourself in ways to keep yourself from going crazy. And that is one of the reasons why I post these videos. It's like a routine. You know, milk cows in the morning or make videos. That's what we do. Uh, yeah, so uh, I know people are tired of looking at the, the balers, and I know they're tired of looking at me fix balers, weld balers. Um, they're tired of me doing any of this stuff. But that's what's going on on this farm. Uh, right now, I have a monumental undertaking of dragging my equipment 400 and plus miles away from this farm to go do a straw job, a straw job, a job where I will be baling straw for a composter. And this is what it takes to get prepared for that. Boring or not, it's what is happening. Uh, there's a lot of maintenance that has to go into all of these balers, whether it's a Heston, New Holland, John Deere, Crone, uh, Massey, Ferguson. It doesn't matter. They all, the Challenger, which are all the same balers, Kloss, it doesn't matter. Freeman made a big baler. I don't know if they still do, but anyway, it's a monumental undertaking to make sure that this equipment is in its tip-top shape before it ever leaves this farm. Because if it leaves this farm to go to somewhere else and it breaks, it's going to make me look like an asshole. I don't need to look like an asshole. I do a good enough job of that already. So, um, yeah, if this is boring to you, you know, if you feel that my channel's de deteriorating because I am doing and showing everything that I do on a daily basis, and let me tell you, I'm only a day behind. That's it. Right now, it is the 12th, May 12th. I did this on the 11th, which you're about to see here. And, uh, yeah, I, I just hope that everybody enjoys what I do. And if you don't enjoy it, there's a really cool little button up here. It's called the unsubscribe button. It's real easy. It's not the one that starts with the S. It's the one that starts with the U. You know, it says unsubscribe. So if you're bored and you don't like what I'm doing, please don't don't watch. I'm not I'm not here to make you watch my channel. I really want you to unsubscribe from the channel if, if I'm boring you. Um, there's always something new that happens on the farm, but at this time of the year, it's prep work. Uh, there's no difference between whether I was prepping the corn planter, which I have to do, and that's coming hopefully, hopefully tomorrow. Uh, we will be pulling the corn planter into the shop, assessing, replacing, repairing, re re just fixing the damn thing. And uh, I'm hoping that that goes pretty well. Uh, and it should. I mean, I've, I know the 7,000 John Deere corn planter. Uh, very well. No, I did not buy the corn planter that I pointed to in my John Deere L341 video. That is, that was a joke. Uh, as as most of my viewers or all of my viewers that watch regularly know that I drove to Kentucky and bought a John Deere 7000. So anyway, now I am going to show you the belly of the beast, where I am doing the work that I'm doing inside the crone baler. Yes, the crone baler. That is so important to keep them in tip-top shape, running, operating, or functioning, or whatever you want to call them, regularly and normal. Hey, Dad, where are you at? In the belly of the beast. That's where I'm at. The belly of the beast. Oh. Now, I'm sure some people would like to think that this is broken. But it's not. Yeah, right? It's right. not. It's not. What this is, is the beginning stages of the maintenance program on the VFS. Is it an easy job? Fuck no, it ain't no easy job. It is not an easy job at all. It actually sucks. But it's one of those things that have to be done to keep the baler running in tip-top condition. So... What we have is the crone parked next to the Heston, which is kind of cool to see. Because you get to see how much bigger the crone is over that Heston. <laughs> the Heston's wider though. The tires are wider. That's it. This is the tires. Nothing else. 
Um, four inches wider. Four inches wider. Tire. Okay. Uh oh. Uh oh. Hold on. We do have to turn the wire. Because this has to come out of the track. Okay, so give me the camera. Oh, I set it down. Uh -oh. Here you go. It's still recording. Oh, it's still recording. Okay, good. Release the brake. I'll be okay in here as long as you don't move too fast and the tractor shut off. So, go ahead. Things are getting light in here. So if you don't know what a, the interior of a crone baler looks like uh, from top side view, it's basically a very heavy duty Yum reel. It's not like the Heston. It is that flywheel is massive. So just so you know, okay, you only need to move it a little bit. Right there is good, I think. Now a little more. Oh shit, hold on. Moving forward, there's a hole to the I remember, don't put your foot I know all about not putting fingers in there. Yeah, listen, as long as you know, not to drop it. Alright, I got it. Now you gotta pick it up, you can't do that. Okay, so, yeah. Alright, so this is the deal here. Where's the, uh, you gotta give me this rag here. We can talk about this shit because it because it's right in front of us. All right. So what happens with these is the bearings don't go bad. The bearings themselves don't go bad. What happens with them is because of all the wear or of all the movement, and you can see it. It starts to wear the race. Now this race is very thick. And when I say it's very thick, I mean it's pretty damn thick in there. And this bearing is really not that bad. I expected it to be a lot worse than what it is. These bearings are not bad at all. Now, what has happened, and the reason they're not that bad, is if you can see all this grease that's here, um, the, uh, the mechanic that worked on it last turned the grease gun up a lot. <laughs> and what happens then is the grease comes out of this pocket, out of this... Uh, it goes through the through the this here and then there's holes and then it goes into this casting which find their way to these bearings and that grease finds its way onto that race which then limits the wear the first year i had this baler uh the wear was about five times what this is and when i say five times i mean it was grooved so deep in there that they were close to actually cutting through to the uh to the to the bearings that are in I think this has needle bearings in it they might be ball I don't know but whatever kind of whether they're balls or needles they were really close where these are like miles away I mean it's pretty damn thick in there so anyway we're gonna replace them anyway I'm not changing anything on a computer and uh, that's just gonna be that and each one of these has two bearings on it well this one's two hundred dollars this is like a hundred and thirty so they're pretty expensive and uh, it's better to replace them now than to be broke down in the field later so that's what we're up to i guess i could add a little bit more to this uh when it comes to these things uh i know a lot of people that own these balers and they run them and after a year two years then things start to break mysteriously just start to break uh waxing does not help anything just so you know I mean, it'll help the aesthetics of it, but that's it. It'll look nicer. But what really matters is what's on the inside of this baler. So when someone buys a Crone baler, Heston, or any manufacturer baler, you really need to have a qualified guy to come out and take a look at it before you purchase your first baler. And I would even say your second baler as well, because there are hidden little things that happen to these things that... Most people don't realize. Now, I've been doing this for over 20 years. This is my 21st year of baling mulch hay for the mushroom industry. And uh, I've made good hay, obviously. Alfalfa, clover. I've done uh, corn stalks. I've done wheat straw, rye straw. I've done it all. I mean, I've done a lot of baling over the years. Um, so, 
I kind of know what to look for, and as far as these crone balers, even though they're new to me over only since, I guess this is the fourth year I'm going to run this thing, for sure it is, uh, this is the, uh, <clears throat> it is a, I think it's a fourth year, the fourth year, definitely the fourth year, going into the fourth year, or fourth season, so, you know, you, you just learn what wears now i've never broken one of these vfs uh pieces uh units uh because i've always had the bearings changed now the first year that i had it i would have ran it another year not even knowing that this was going to be an issue uh there's a fellow out in illinois who has the smaller three by three model and he has problems with his vfs and i don't think he did the bearing change uh if he hasn't he needs to and I think it runs faster. I think the VFS in the in the three by three runs faster. Uh, it doesn't have as much stress on it, and I think that the wear points or the wear time is the same. So if you get twelve to fifteen thousand bales of rough service out of that baler, uh, chances are you better be changing them by the fifteen thousandth bale. Uh, especially in alfalfa, alpha, grass hay, damp hay, silage hay for sure, 12 to 15, get closer to 12,000 bales on those. And, I mean, if you look at it, it, it boils down to pennies, you know, 20, 25 cents a bale if you go, you know, between 12 and 15,000 bales before you change them. So, uh, if you do it yourself, it'd be about half that. If you do it, if you pay somebody to do it, you're looking at 50 cents or more per bale, baled. So, just so you know, all balers have wear points, all balers break, all balers have their strong points and their weaknesses. And uh, I've settled on this company, Crone, because I have the best of all worlds there. There are fewer weak points than there are, uh, you know, fewer weak points and more strong points to this baler. That's why I run them. There goes my wife. Anyway, thanks for watching.